book of 1 John chapter 4. We are in the longest series I've ever done in my life. And this is part 8 of identity theft. Now, uh, let me start off by saying this. This is also the most profound um, series I've ever done. I believe with all my heart that this is one of the most important things that the body of Christ can receive. But I'm also going to share this with you. If you don't want it, you won't get it. And if you want it, you've got to study it out. This is, for our guests today, I'm, I'm going to shock you a little bit. We, we don't give Reader's Digest messages in this house. We give, yea, the deep word of God. Uh, you've got to study this out if you want to share in this. Uh, I believe with all my heart that uh, the devil, religion, and the world system have robbed God's people of their identity. If we go back, and of course this is, this is part eight, I cannot go back all the way to the first of it, but one thing we all know that in Genesis God said, let us make man in our image. He's talking about that creative power. Uh, he's talking about the, 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 the power that he has. So he says, let us make man in our image. We have that creative power. Jesus said that when I go away, you shall do the same things that I did and even greater. So what's wrong with us? Because we have let religion, we've let the world system rob us from who we really are. God made us somebody. But what we've done is, is we've let the world system beat us up. We let the world system hold our past over us. And we believe what we've been told by either Christian television, by religion, by parents, by friends, by exes that ain't in Texas. Amen. <laughs> Amen, preacher. <laughs> but what we've got to do, we've got to get back. Jesus is coming back. Amen? Yes. He says he's coming back after a church without spot or wrinkle. This is why I believe with all my heart that this revelation knowledge is flowing so freely today. But we as God's people who have been moving in revelation knowledge have also taken revelation knowledge for granted that we don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Matter of fact, you know, there, there are many times when people leave this service and, 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 and they'll either email me or call me or, or talk to me and say, man, that, that was just outstanding message. I've never heard anything like that in my life. And, and, but you know what? If your life's not changing, you're not adapting. It's like, like the Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. So if you come here to hear a great message, it's my responsibility to feed you. It's your responsibility to eat it. And you've got to take this. You know what? If you want your life changed, God has made it available for you to have it changed. And it's already yours. The problem is you have believed what religion has told you. You have believed what the world system has told you. You believed what your past has told you. And therefore, you believe you're just some lowly sinner saved by grace. You're not that. You are a child of the living God. You are kings and priests of the Most High God. Amen? I'm going to pick this up in uh, 1 John chapter 4. This is where we left off in verse 17. So we have been robbed of our identity. Uh, and, you know, today in our society that we live in, uh, we hear a whole lot about identity theft. I hope none of you have ever been a victim of that. From what I hear, it's atrocious to try to come out of and try to recoup from because somebody steals your Social Security number, your driver's license. And, you know, I just recently went... Uh, to see a doctor, and, 
And the doctor asked for my social security number. I said, nope, ain't giving that up. I said, well, we're, we're, we're the doctors. I don't care if you're Methuselahs. You're not getting my social security number. Amen? My social security number ain't got a thing to do with our relationship. I guard my identity. Amen? But there are those out there that are trying to steal your identity. So, therefore, they can take your credit and they can, they can apply to them and they can buy anything they want to. And then all of a sudden, your credit is ruined. And even though it wasn't you that did it, it takes you years to recoup from that. And that's exactly what's happened to us as God's people. Our identity has been stolen. And now it's time for us to take it back, for us to be the people that God has always wanted us to be. I've dropped little hints to you where we're going. By the time I get into this series, I'm going to say some extremely deep things to you. But everything I say will be out of the Word of God, that you'll be able to read it for yourself. Amen? But I've given you several hints now. Number one, that, that our spirit man is to be preserved blameless we keep hearing things like this in the bible and we talk about these these things in the bible and sometimes we kind of scratch our head because we've heard religion tell us well as long as you're in the human body you're going to sin i'm here to tell you it's your choice to sin and see sometimes religion gives you an excuse to sin like well i just can't help it yes you can God has given you his spirit. God has given you his word. God has given you his son. God has given you everything you need to be a success, a success in life. The Bible also tells us that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Because, you know, and, and once again, we get into the trinity of the body, that you're a spirit, a soul, and a body. And so what the Bible's telling us is that your spirit man is sealed under the day of redemption. That means you're, nothing, when something is sealed, nothing can get in and nothing can get out. But we let religion beat us up to the point to where we think that we're, we're just some kind of lowly Christians in this walk with the Lord. But when your spirit man is sealed under the day of redemption, you know what? Nothing bad can get in there. And nothing can get out because it's sealed by the Holy Spirit. So I want you to understand something today as I keep pressing this point across to you. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of where you've been, regardless of your past, you are a good person. Because you have a spirit man that has been sealed into the day of redemption. Oh, your body may act up. Your soul man may act up. Because, see, your soul man is where your mind, your will, and your emotions are. That's where you remember your past. That's where you remember your upbringing. That's where you remember all the things that's ever happened to you and all the sin you've ever participated in. All that comes to, rem to remembrance. Because God, when he made us, he meant for your spirit man to rule you. Because your spirit man is sealed under the day of redemption. But what's happened is we have not been taught enough about our spirit man. We've been taught about the body. We've been taught about the soul. But we've not been taught about our spirit man. And inside you, right now, lies everything you would ever need to get by in this life. Inside you lies all the healing that you need. You don't got to come up here and have Pastor Ron lay hands on you. Lay hands on yourself. You know what? Inside you, give me, bring some water up here real quick. Inside you <coughs> lies prosperity. Inside you lies everything. I'll just keep it. Go ahead, son. I got a feeling I'm going to need this. Amen. Inside you lies your joy. Inside you lies that peace. There's not one of us in here that hasn't hoped and prayed for a happy family life. You know, we can put up with a lot on the job as long as our family life is secure. But one thing's wrong is when we go and we work the, the workforce and we put up with all the little Hitlers we got to put up with and we, we put up with all of these people that are just crazy 
at least we get to come home to sanity. But some of us can't come home to that. But I'm here to tell you this, that inside you already is everything you would ever need. God did not shortchange you when you became born again. God did not keep any. God, I've already shown you in the scripture that God gave you everything. So watch this with me now as I read to you. This is where we left off in verse 17. The Bible says, Herein is our love made perfect, made mature. You know what? We get scared when we start talking about perfection because we've been drilled in our head by religion that you're some lowly sinner. Listen, you're anything but lowly sinner. You have been created in the image of God, and there is nothing lowly about my God. And if there's nothing lowly about my God, there's nothing lowly about me. I am what I am. I am who I belong to. I am, I belong to the great I am. And God is not lacking in anything, and neither are we. But we've got to learn to tap into that. So here we go. It says, wherein our love made perfect, <coughs> excuse me, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. You'll have to forgive me. I'm struggling with my voice today, but we'll be all right. Amen. <coughs> Say, help him, Jesus. All right, all right. Glory to God. You get that out of the way. <coughs> it's out, but it's coming out whether he likes it or not. <coughs> Here we go. This is where we left off. Yes. He's bringing me something to help me out here. <coughs> Thank you. Cough drop. Amen, amen. Yeah, I, I agree with that. More than enough, amen? All right, watch this. Because as he is, so are we in this world. This is one of the most important things that we can grasp. Is that not in the Word of God? Do you not, I didn't write that in there. It's already in your Bible, amen? So what the Word is telling you so, uh, see, sometimes we read this stuff and it doesn't sink in. you got to take your time and ask the Holy Spirit to open up your spiritual eyes because the Bible says, as he is, so are we. Where? In this world. Not in the sweet by and by, but in the nasty now. So, is God lacking in anything? Is God broke? Is God sick? Is God depressed? Is God addicted? Is God jealous? Is God angry? You know what? As he is, so are we in this world. So are we not in this world? Then as he is, so are we. Say this to me. Say, as he is, as he is. so are we. In this, in this world. Say it again. As he is, As he is. So, are we. so are we in this world. In this world. Turn to somebody and say, so are, we. so are we. Now, you got to grasp this because inside you is the power of the living God. You say, well, you know what? I try to kick drugs and I try to kick this and I try to kick that. And I give it my best effort, and I just can't do it. The reason why you haven't been able to do it, because you got the cart leading the horse. You letting your body dictate to you everything in your life. God never intended for your body to be the boss. You have a spirit, soul, and a body. Your soul is where your mind is. That's where you, re you remember all these things. Your body is kind of run. Your body believes the five senses. That's what it believes. Therefore, if your body wants some dope, then all of a sudden now you're letting your body run the show. That's why your life is a total wreck 
because you've got something running the show that God never intended on running the show. Amen? Hang in there with me. We're going to be all right. Amen? All right, here we go. Here we go. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We have to understand many things. And the first thing we got to understand is we are not what religion has tried to make us out. Don't you realize that it was religion that nailed Jesus to the cross? I know sometimes I, people get a little upset with me because I'm always down on religion. Of course I'm down on religion because religion has been nothing but to, to design to get you off on another path away from intimacy with God. Religion wants you to have an intimacy with religion, with a denomination, with a man, with, uh, I'm going to hurt your feelings. Y'all going to be all right? You don't need any little beads to get to Jesus. You know what? You have direct line to the throne of God anytime you want it because as he is, so are we in this world. And when you start to believe that, and you know what? You can't just say that. You got to read it. You got to study it. You got to devour it. You got to go over these things over and over because you have fed your body and your soulish realm all these things, all these years. And all of a sudden, you, you believed everything you were ever told. And now all of a sudden, you're hearing something foreign, something that don't fit. And you want to reject it. Because you've not fed your spirit man enough. You have fed the body. You've fed the soul. But you've not fed your spirit man. That's why things are weak in your life. Because your spirit man. See, when, 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 when you get born again, the spirit man joins with the Holy Spirit. And now you have the Holy Spirit inside your spirit man. But yet now you've got to educate your soul man to the things of God. When you get saved, you aren't automatically spiritual. I know some people, I, I, I've had some people come to me and say, well, I got saved and I just, I feel so much better. No, you don't. You don't, I mean, you might be happy about it, and I, I understand that, and I'm not trying to bring you high down at all. But I'm here to tell you something. Spiritual things are not related to emotional things because emotional things are attached to the flesh. Now, we get some people get on the right side of the ditch over here and, you know, they want to hoop and holler and jump and jiggle. I got nothing wrong with that. I think, listen, I've been in more Pentecostal churches than most Pentecostals. I have, I have preached in some hardcore Pentecostal churches, man, you know, where the women all wear them buns on the head and no makeup and, you know, got them dresses made out of pants. Hiding, hiding them ankles, you know, and listen, if, if ankles turn you on, you're sick. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Besides that, baby, put some Max Factor on. Something. <laughs> God. <laughs> <It might. laughs> We've been there, ain't we, Tommy Gunn? <laughs> So what religion has done, and I've got to say this, and I don't want to backtrack, but I showed you in the Bible where the Bible is your spiritual mirror. But what we've done is we've looked into natural mirrors, and we've seen our reflection, and we believe the natural mirror. That is not who you are. Who you are is right in here. And when you look in that natural mirror, you see all the mistakes that you've ever made, You've seen all the people you've ever hurt. You've seen all your failures, and therefore you believe that. You're looking into what I call funny mirrors like they have at the, at the county fair, you know, make your head look big and your waist skinny and your butt like that, you know. That's what these things are. They're funny mirrors, and you believe the funny mirrors. But if you look inside the Word of God, in the mirror of God, you're going to see the image of who you really are. I don't care if you've been a junkie. I don't care if you've been in prison. I don't care if you've been this. I don't care if, you, I don't care if you've been a prostitute. I don't care what you've been. It, it does not matter what you've been. 
That's what's wrong with churches today. They're trying to work their way to heaven. We got to be good. Listen, you don't come to church to go to heaven. Coming to church does not make you righteous. Oh, I know people will argue with me over that. I'm fine. Argue all you want to. But coming to church is what righteous people do. Big difference. Amen? So as we get into the Word of God, I want you to understand a lot of things that you don't have to put up with sickness. You don't have to put up with the poverty. You don't have to put up with depression and addictions. You don't have to put up. See, because you've let your body run the show, now your body is in charge. But if you this is not going to happen for you overnight. But if you make up your mind, I'm going to start feeding my spirit man instead of my soul man and my body, then all of a sudden, man, your spirit man is going to get stronger and you can speak to these things. You can speak to your body to be healed. Because you know what? When your body hurts, you go to the doctor because your body is dictating to you through his five senses. And then all of a sudden, the doctor gives you a report. And all of a sudden, you don't want, you don't like. And that report goes into your mind. That's where your soul man is. But you know what? If you don't have some reserve in your spirit, man, you're going to believe exactly what that doctor said. Now, I'm not, I'm not denying its existence. But what I am denying is it's right to be on a child of God. I'm denying it's right. I'm denying it's right to be, for any child of God to be addicted to anything. It doesn't have a right to be there. But you've got to educate your spirit. Listen, I would love to come, come, come to you and lay hands on you and say, addiction be gone. And, and you know what? And bless God, sometimes that does happen that way. But you know what? I'm here to tell you this right now, that if you will just reach down deep inside you and grow your spirit, man, you speak to your body. I know all about addictions. I've had them. I've had every addiction there is known to man. I've done so many things in my life that's just unreal. But you know what? I finally figured out the key to all that. When the doctors told me this is going to kill you, that's going to kill you, you'll never get rid of this, you're always going to have that because you used to use needles and this, that, and the other. And I'm here to tell you today, I can stand before you today, and I can say my blood is pure, my liver is clean, and my body is strong. How can I say that? Because number one, I got to prove physically, and I got to prove spiritually. Because I choose to believe the word of God over the word of man. So this is how come we've got to grow our spirit, man. Go with me now to Matthew 16. This is, I'm going back somewhere now where we started out because I think it's extremely important that we grasp this. In Matthew 16, I want you to understand exactly what's going on here. Matthew 16, you there, amen? Yes, You're not, so hang on. Matthew 16, verse 18. You'll recall I went over this intently, but I think it's important that you understand this once again. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I want you to understand that, that what's happening here is Jesus is now asking the disciples something. Who do men say that I am? And all of a sudden, because he's trying to teach them something of his identity, and then all of a sudden Peter pops up, and Peter says, Thou art the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ. And Jesus said to him, Simon, flesh and blood, your smarts did not reveal. Your, your soul man and your body did not reveal this to you, but by my Father. God only speaks through his spirit because God is a spirit, and God spoke to Peter with revelation knowledge. See, anytime you think a church has been built upon Peter, you are incorrect. He's talking about that revelation knowledge that comes through the spiritual channel. It doesn't come through the flesh. It doesn't come through the mind. Things of God come spiritually. They come spirit to spirit, from God's spirit to your spirit, and it travels by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So watch this with me once again as I go over this with you because he said, Thou art Peter. Once again, that Greek word for Peter is Petros. That means a piece of the rock. 
And then he goes on down here, and, and, and he, he says right here, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock. Now, that word rock is Petra. That means the rock. So what he is saying to him, Thou art a piece of this rock. What rock? Revelation knowledge. But guess what? That piece, if I had a rock up here today and a hammer, and I broke it, and I took one piece of that rock and I gave it to Tommy, guess what? It's still a rock. You understand? It's still a rock because it was Petros of the Petra. It is a piece of the rock, but it's still rock. You with me? So this is, this is what the Lord was telling him, and this is what we've got to understand. We are a piece of of the rock you're not a lowly sinner saved by grace you are kings and priests of the most high see how can you act like the people of god when you don't know who you are you act like who you're told you are well you're just an ex-con you're just an ex-hooker you're just this you're just that but the bottom line here is you got to know who you are because that stuff don't bother me who I used to be. I used to be one of the most notorious people ever hit the streets of Nashville. I am not that anymore and haven't been for, me, for over 30-something years. But I am Petros. I am a piece of the rock. And that is a difference in my life. So therefore, we all get to make a decision. Now, if you want to continue to be part of that crowd, then fine. Things never change. If you don't want to study this out for your own, guess what? You're just going to hear revelation knowledge. You're going to be hearers of the word and not doers. And you will not receive the fruit of what I'm trying to get across to you. Because once you grasp this, guess what? You no longer got to worry about being in debt. You no longer got to, I don't care what the financial situation does in this country. I'm not afraid of what happens in this country because I am not part of it. Right. I'm part of the kingdom of God system. I function in God's kingdom system. I don't depend upon whether the NASDAQ's going to fall or rise. I don't depend on the housing. My house is paid off. Hallelujah. I ain't got to depend on the housing market. I ain't got to depend on, why is that? Because I operate in kingdom business. And it takes time, but it works. But I'm going to tell you something. With the Lord coming back, things are moving faster and faster. And you don't got to spend the amount of time that I spent. If you'll just grasp this word of God, apply it to your life, and study it out for your own, you will be walking in what, listen, you are made in the image of God. God did not make you to be, to be uh, uh, broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen? <coughs> God did not have any intentions for you to turn out the way that some of us have turned out. But bless God, we can put a stop to it today. We can end up being the people that God has made us, to, that God always wanted us to be. Because God is letting us know who we are. Go with me now to John, the book of John, first chapter. John chapter 1. You there, amen? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? Now, right now, we already know we're talking about Jesus Christ. Amen? Matter of fact, it says so right down there in verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So it's referring to the word. Now, look at verse 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was sent before me. Now, hang on. Are y'all ready? Say, I'm ready, Pastor. <laughs> and of his fullness have all we received. Is that not in your Bible? Of his fullness, watch it, and of his fullness have how much? 
How much? All. We receive. Everything God's got, you got. Now, I know that's a shocker, and I know it's going to go right over somebody's head. But try this for a thought. Just try something really silly. Try believing the Word of God. How about that? Try believing the Word over your soul, man, over your body, over what you've been taught by religion, over what you've been taught by denominations. How about opening this thing up and reading this for yourself? Excuse me. <coughs> Let me take a pause with a cause. Amen? <coughs> Getting out. Amen? Come sit up here, son. Hold on to that for me. Well, you're all right. I'll come, I'll come to you. Okay, 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 okay. Here, here, here we go. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Not part, not half, not just when you're good, and not just when you sing in the choir and come to church. You have got the fullness. Does it not say that in your Bible? I am not preaching blasphemy. I'm preaching the Word of God that so many ministers want to look over because they're afraid to preach this stuff because they're afraid to get run out of town on a rail. They can't run me out of town. Amen? I got security, bless God. And of his fullness have all we received. Listen, if you're tired of living in that shotgun house, turn around and call that house a liar. Because, see, you're letting that house define who you are. You're tired of driving that car around the neighborhood and everybody thinks you're spraying for bugs every time you go out. <laughs> call that thing a liar. That is not who you are. But you got to understand, this takes time to work the Word. But when you start working the Word, the Word will start to work for you. This is not magic. This is not Peter Pan. I ain't got no Tinkerbell, no fairy dust. I ain't got no genie in the lamp. This is called W-O-R-K, which is something a lot of Christians don't want to hear about because we want that fast food anointing. We want that drive-through service. We want to hold the tithing, hold this, just give me the blessing. No, that ain't how it works, people. It takes dedication. You have as much of God as you want. The reason is you've got to give God more of you. When you give God more of you, then all of a sudden this stuff starts to work for you. Because, listen, the last thing this pastor wants for its membership is that when all this is over, said, and done, and you stand before the Lord, and you say, Lord, why was I always sick? Lord, why did I always have to be broke? Lord, why did I always have to struggle down there? God's going to reveal to you once again his word and say to you, I put in you everything you ever needed. You chose the world system over my system. And I don't know about you, but this world system is quickly going down the toilet. And if you want to hitch your wagon to it, God will let you. God will not stop you. But try this on for size. This works. You don't have to live in this kind of conditions. You don't have to be what everybody says you are. You can be the child of God that God made you to be. And all you got to do is stand up and work the word. That's it. That's all you got to do, stand up. And you know what? It, listen, there ain't nobody ever used to party hard any worse than I did. Don't tell me about your partying days. They don't measure up. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Honey, I didn't party on Friday and Saturday. I partied for a month. I stayed gone. You couldn't find me. I'd either be in Atlanta or New Orleans, one or the other. But I was gone. But I'm here to tell you right now that all of a sudden, when you get tired of that lifestyle, and you understand this, that 
There's more here on this side of the cross than there ever was over there. Because I know the depression of being on that side. I know that you feel like you're a loser. I know you feel like this is all you got. You might as well enjoy it. But I'm here to tell you this. This ain't all you got. You got this. You climb out of that mud hole. Climb up and be the person that God wants you to be. You can speak to your own addictions. You can speak to your own poverty. You can speak to your own peace of mind. You can speak to these things, and they'll start to work in your life. But if you don't want to let go of the world system, then you're going to get the fruit of the world system. Is everybody okay this morning? Hebrews chapter 12. i got to move quickly now. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse uh, 23. Hebrews 12, 23. You there, amen? You not to hang on? Man, y'all are good. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. The Bible says, To the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of of just men made perfect. Bring, my, bring me my glasses back there. Man, I tell you, all kinds of things are trying to come against the word this morning, aren't they? That's okay. I got glasses, I got tissue, and I got water. And I got a cough drop in my mouth. We're going to get through this. Amen? Thank you, bless God. All right, all right, here. Hang on here. Say, well, Pastor, if you believe all that, how come you need them glasses? I'm working on something. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, I'd much rather admit I'm working on something get my religious nose stuck up in the air and lie to everybody and say, well, I've arrived. No, oh, you a liar. All right, hang on here. All right, all right, all right. Verse, tw- verse 23, let's try this again. And to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits. Notice that spirit is small s. That's referring to your spirit man. Okay, of just men. What do you mean just men? It's talking about born again people. Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the who? Yeah. Say, that's me. that's me. Don't you know in the book of James it talks about that the money is crying out for God's people? Problem is, is your antenna's off base. It can't find you. You can sit around and say, okay, money, come to me now. You can say all that all you want to. But if you're not walking this, your antenna's messed up. Because you know what? This has got to be for the kingdom of God, not for your kingdom. All right, all right, all right, all right. Stay with me now. Watch this. And it says right here, of the just men made perfect. See, we get uncomfortable when we start hearing these words about perfect. Because we've been drilled in our little peanut brain that we're sinners, and as long as we're in the human body, we're going to sin. Incorrect. Once again, it's a choice to sin. As all that it is, is a choice to sin. Uh, look, look at me now, Hebrews 13, verse 21. You there, amen? Make you, everybody say perfect. perfect. See, does that word make y'all kind of funny? Get used to it. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that is well pleasing in his sight through Christ Jesus. <coughs> Go with me to Philippians chapter 2. <coughs> I'll get there, bless God. Thank you. I'm fine. Philippians chapter 2. Okay. Verse 5. You there, amen? You not? Say, hang on. I like y'all. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. You ready for some more revelation knowledge? Say, bring it on. Let this mind be in you. Everybody say, in. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, 
who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, which was, everybody say, in the likeness of men. Now watch this with me as we get into this. Now, let this mind, that's this mindset. That's this way of thinking. Let this mindset be in you, which was also in Christ. Now, what it's saying here is the same way that Christ thought, let that thought be in you. You agree with me? So, all of a sudden now, why do you think the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ? If we got the mind of Christ, don't you, listen, Christ wasn't no dummy, amen? Then we can accomplish how many things through Christ? All right, and see, we've been using that as a slogan. We've been saying that, but we really don't believe it. But the thing about it is, now you can believe it because you have a right to it because that mind that's in Christ, let it be in you. The same thinking, the same way of thinking, God's saying, let it be in you. Now, hang on. This gets a little bit deeper. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, colon. Now, what that means is, it's about to give you some details to follow up on how his mindset was. Wait, watch this. All right, here, here it comes. Who being in the what? In the what? If he, see, you got to get this. You're a form of God. You're not God, but you're a form of God. Why do you think the devil wants to kill you? The devil don't care if you go to heaven. The devil don't care if you go to hell. The devil don't want you on this earth acting like Jesus. You got to get, see, this is the hardest thing ever. No, in the name of Jesus, it's the easiest thing ever. Everybody agree with me? You got to understand that you're not the drunk, you're not the whoremonger, you're not the hooker, you're not the drunk, you're not the addict. You are a form of the living God. And when you realize that and you start acting like that, you're going to realize who you really are. Is that in your Bible? Pastor Ron didn't go around late at night while y'all were sleeping and write this in your Bible, did he? It? It's in there, Amen. All right, all right, hang, hang in there with me. Watch this now. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the fo another form, the form of a servant which was made in the likeness of men. Now, you have a spirit, and inside that spirit, that, that's where this in is coming from. It's in you, in you, in your spirit, man, is the form of God. You've been developing the form of the world. You have let these people trick your mind into thinking that you are who they want you to be. See, religion wants you to rely upon them to connect to God. You don't need anybody because you got the blood of Christ. That's all you need right here. And it's saying out here that being in the form of a servant. See, once you really know who you are, you can be a servant. It doesn't bother Pastor Ron at all to be a servant. Why? Because I know who I am. I don't got to go around telling everybody, I'm the grand poopah of, uh, you know, I'm the grand granddaddy and all that. No. I ain't got to say all that stuff because you know what? I will serve anywhere that I can serve. I know I told you this once before. I'm going I'm to re repeat it again, but I remember one time when I was asked to be a keynote speaker to a bunch of pastors, and I'm sitting in this 
room, you know, where they where they set the speakers, and I'm I'm in that room, and I get there first, and I'm sitting there and getting ready to preach, and all of a sudden in come all these other they they usher all these other pastors in there, and I stand up and greet everybody, and the other pastors come walking in, and I'm dressed just like I am right now, except I had on my riding vest, and I'm dressed like that, standing in there, and all these other big elite pastors come walking in with all these fine suits on, sit down, and one of them took his coat off and handed it to me. Well, I took his coat and I hung it up. And I asked all of them, I said, is there anything I can get y'all? Yeah, well, uh, we'll take a glass of water. We'll take this. We'll take that. I said, oh, that's fine. Okay. I go get it. And I, I come back and find out this great big old preacher done sat down in my seat. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. Are you comfortable? <laughs> Is there anything I can do for the rest of y'all? No, we're, we're quite fine. Thank you, son. Good. And then it comes time to preach. And so the ushers come in, and they ushered us out, and we all got up, and I just, I, I opened the door for everybody, and let everybody walk on out, and they walked on out, and I walked on out, and I sat down on the front row with them, they kept looking at me like, what are you doing sitting here? You ought to see in their mouths when they called me up, because I was a keynote speaker. <laughs> and I'll guarantee you one thing, I got in every one of their faces, too. I was just going right down the line like this. <laughs> better be careful see when you know who you are it don't hurt you to serve matter of fact if it bothers you to serve you got a pride problem you can never be a leader unless you first learn how to be a good servant stand up with me glory to God